Happy New Year guys! This is my first video in the new year and we're starting with a bang. So this video has been requested for months, like a lot of months, and I wanted to record it. Like I recorded it multiple times. I recorded it three days ago and every time I record it I feel like there's stuff that I forget to say or I sound too dramatic or I, I don't like the way things came across. I just, I want to make sure that when I make this video it doesn't seem like I'm being dramatic. Like I I'm asking for sympathy, like I'm trying to get people to hate Sandra. I want it to be very matter of fact, like me just telling what happened, but my emotions were involved at the end of the day, so bear with me. I'm gonna do my best to explain this without making it a bigger deal than it needs to be. And just to be clear on the reason why I'm making this video, because I'm sure there will be people that are like, why even say anything at all? It's been so long. Um, I'm asked every day on every single platform about the situation about what happened, about follow-up questions. So number one, I want to just get it all out there so that we never have to bring it up again. <laughs> and number two, when I posted really briefly about it months ago, I gave 2% of the story of what happened. And there's been a lot of assumptions made and accusations thrown around. And I just want to make sure that I tell the full story. So I'm going to do my best to be very honest with myself and you guys and and very matter of fact and very fair about how I explain it. Okay, I'm talking too much. So if you have no idea what I've been talking about for the last like minute, how do I even begin this? I guess I should start by saying hi, <laughs> surprise, I'm bisexual. Yep. That's a thing. I came out on Twitter a couple months back and it's like the hardest story to explain because there's so many like side stories you have to know and understand in order for you to fully understand the big story. It's just like a lot of, uh, this is why I haven't filmed this video yet. <laughs> So we're just gonna start from the beginning and tell it in chronological order because that's the best way to explain the Sandra stuff which then leads into me coming out and then I'll talk about all that stuff. So buckle up. And if I, sorry, I'm giving so many disclaimers. If I seem like I'm making jokes out of things or laughing about it, it's because that's my way of coping, is that the right word? Or like handling the situation, kind of making light of it. Um, I've also had a lot of time to sit on it and process and heal, I guess. It's, yeah. It Okay, this is gonna be a lot. About four years ago, me and Sandra um, met through mutual friends and became really close, became best friends over like two months, three months. We both lived in LA, but in our own places. I came out to her, she was the very first person I came out to. I told her I didn't know if I was lesbian, I didn't know if I was bisexual, I just knew I was attracted to girls, but I also was attracted to guys. And before I moved to LA, I was living in Indiana and I didn't even know what bisexual was. I didn't didn't know that that existed. I came out to Sandra. She was the very first person I ever came out to and it seems fine. She was like happy for me. She was supportive. Everything was fine and dandy. So fast forward a year, she ended up moving back to Chicago. It's gonna seem like some of these parts of the story are really out of place or like unnecessary, but it all fits together. So just bear with me. And for that next whole year while she was in Chicago and I was still in LA, we were talking on FaceTime every day, still really close. And almost every time we talked, she would say like, God, I wish I could come back to, out to LA. I miss LA. I hate living in Chicago, on and on and on. My lease was about to be up and I had the idea of what if we got a house together? And we started talking about this maybe three months before my lease was up and we ended up finding a house. So the way it was gonna work was in order for me to get the house, I I had to put the first three months of rent down ahead of time and then start paying rent after those first three months. So I told Sandra, you come back out to LA, those first three months I've already paid for, so use that time to find a job and then after those three months, you'll start pitching in for rent. And this was a house, it's not an apartment. Like this is a full ass house. We knew what we were signing up for. It's not cheap, but we were so excited and I was really optimistic about it. I had no reason to think that it wasn't going to work. After the first three months, Sandra hadn't looked for a job at all. And I don't like confrontation. I don't like people being mad at me. I don't like causing issues. I just want everybody to like get along, be having a good time. And I don't wanna cause waves 
which is not the greatest quality about myself, I know. So in a really nice, polite way, I was just kind of like, hey dude, the first three months is up, like, can you start looking for a job? And she was like, yeah, dude, sorry, like, my bad, I'm on it. And then another couple of months went by, and then another couple of months went by, and then another couple of months went by. I think it was about nine or 10 months in, and she still hadn't looked for jobs. She'd applied a few places, but these places she applied to were positions that were pretty high up in companies and not realistic, you know? I had made suggestions like, hey, what about like working at a Sephora? Like, she loves makeup. And everything that I suggested that was like, what about Target or like anything, anything's better than nothing. It was just kind of brushed off and she just kept applying for positions that weren't realistic and she didn't have the qualifications for. And I was very vocal about that. I, I said like, dude, I don't know if that's the right path to be trying right now when you don't have really any kind of resume to, to show. And I get it. I know that being around a bunch of people that are influencers and kind of have their own work schedule or their own work their own hours or have the freedom to work for themselves or work from home it's really hard to live right next to that and see that and then have to get like a nine to five job i understand that that's not ideal you're seeing this lifestyle that you probably want to live but you have to be realistic with yourself you know like you you agreed to live and pay rent i don't know you just can't I don't know, I don't know, this is, this is like hard to explain. So anyway, finally after nine or 10 months of no job happening and me paying the rent, the Wi-Fi, the utilities, a lot of groceries, I finally said, hey, I think it's probably best if you move out. And what really sparked this for me is because I was about to start shooting Guilty Party, which was 12 hour days on set, learning lines every night to wake up at 5 a.m. and get to set at 6 a.m. Like it was a lot of work. And it was really frustrating for me to spend 12 hours on set working hard to make money to pay for someone else to live in this house. It started to eat at me more and more and more. And I do take partial responsibility for not being harder on her and not saying after like four months, like get a job or move out. She was my best friend and I believed her when she said she was gonna get a job and I believed her when she said she was gonna fix it and make it work and I wanted I wanted it to work so badly and I, I wanted her to accomplish what she came to LA to do. I didn't wanna I didn't I didn't wanna get in the way of that. <sighs> yeah I know I know. And in case anyone's like, what does this have to do with you coming out? Just hold on. It's, it all comes together. Just hold on. So after I asked her to move out, she was like, okay, I get it. I'm going to start figuring out plans to go back to Chicago. And it's not that I expected her to say like, okay, I'm going to start looking at places in LA because I know that that's not a realistic possibility if she w didn't have a job for the last 10 months. But it, it, I don't know. It just, it, kind of irritated me that she was just gonna go back to Chicago, pick everything up, go back to Chicago. It felt like a waste of a year. Like this was an opportunity to come back to LA. She hated living in Chicago. I heard it every day I talked to her and it felt like it was a waste of a year at my expense. I felt taken advantage of, I felt used, and I felt I felt stupid, I felt played. Because not only was it just not paying rent, utilities, Wi-Fi, all that other stuff, but it was like she was spending money on clothes or Ubers or shoes, going out to eat all the time, post mating almost daily. I took it really personally when she would go and spend money that I know should have been going towards rent for me. It, it just became very hard to want to be around her because I, every time I was around her, I just, I got frustrated and I got irritated because it wasn't, it didn't seem like there was any effort made to fix it at all. And even when I asked her to leave, it was never like, hey dude, I, I really want to be able to like, pay you back for some of this money or blah, 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 blah. Like nothing was ever offered in a way to fix, whether it was money or I don't know. Like, and even after when I asked her to move out, I told her, I said, I'm never going to let money be the end of our friendship. Yes, I'm irritated with you. I'm frustrated. I'm pretty upset right now. So even after all of that, I was still willing to make the friendship work and stay friends. So... Here's where it all goes to shit. So with all of this built up frustration, I was venting to my friend who is an openly gay guy and he mentioned something to me that 
rose a very, 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 very large red flag. He had gone to church with Sandra and on the way home, he was kind of asking her questions about certain things that, that were said or certain messages and like her beliefs and stuff like that. And she asked him, so if I'm gay, like, am I going to hell? And she straight up said to him like, yes, but you can be saved with like conversion therapy, going to church, that kind of stuff. And when he told me that, like, I just couldn't believe it because me and Sandra had so many in-depth talks about religion. I grew up going to a private Catholic school until the day I dropped out. I grew up in that and we talked about it all the time because I would tell her how it was really hard for me to grow up in that environment, being bisexual and being confused and feeling like there was something wrong with me or that, I don't know. And I, and it wasn't a one-sided conversation. We'd go back and forth. She would tell me how Christianity isn't like that. And there were plenty of opportunities where she could have been like, oh, well, actually I do agree with that belief. Or, well, actually that's kind of what I think as well. So on and so forth. It was never mentioned. It's not like we never talked about it. That was a big thing that people were like, well, why didn't you just ask her if that's how she felt sooner? Well, didn't you ever ask her? Why'd you never talk about it? We did, in depth all the time. She used to tell me she wanted to save my parents from being Catholic because it was horrible. I just, we talked about religion a lot. So for her to say that to Ryan and then cherry on top, she told Ryan not to tell anyone. So my immediate theory when I heard all this was she has felt this way all along and she didn't want me to know because she knew how I would react and she knew I would probably kick her out and she was living for free and didn't want to lose that. Hence why she told Ryan, don't tell anyone. That was my theory. So with that in mind, I knew that I had to ask Sandra myself and I needed to hear it from her own mouth because that's some heavy shit right there. So I think it was like a week after my friend told me the stuff that she had said. It was pretty awkward in the house already with me and Sandra because of the money stuff. So I was trying to find a good time to ask her about what she had said and it was just never a good time. And then there was one day where we were about to go to a birthday dinner. So couldn't have been worse timing. While we were waiting for an Uber, I just blurted it out. She was about to leave in I think like a week and a half, a week. Like she was so close to leaving and going back to Chicago. And I just like, I needed to know. So I just blurted it out. Out and I was like, random question. Do you think that because I'm bisexual, I'm going to hell? Oh my God, you could have heard a fucking pin drop. She looked at me and she was like, well, yeah. And even though I knew what her answer was gonna be, it was still shocking to hear it. So after she said yes, I was like, do you realize how insulting that is? What, you, like what? Are you serious? I'm getting worked up. And so she went on to tell me that we're all sinners. I drink and I smoke. It's just that like your sin is bisexual. And I was like, hold the fuck up. You are choosing to drink. You are choosing to smoke. I am not choosing to be bisexual. And that's when she told me, well, I think that it is a choice. And so after that, I was like, I'm gonna go walk out to the balcony. I just, I need to walk away right now. And so while I was on the balcony, all I was thinking was like, this is my best friend. Like, let me just put you in my state of mind in that moment. This is the person that knows me better than anyone on the planet earth, better than my family, better than any boyfriend I've ever had, any girlfriend I've ever had. And she's telling me that everything she knows about me isn't good enough. Everything about me just gets erased and all that matters is that I'm bisexual and that makes me go to hell. It was just so like insulting and heartbreaking to hear someone who knows you better than anyone just be like, yeah, no, you're going to hell. It's just like the person that knows you best knows your heart and knows who you are as a person. And it was like her saying that none of that mattered because I was bisexual. Me being bisexual overruled any good I've ever done in my life and just tosses me into hell. So anyway, after I walked out to the balcony, I came back in and our Uber was arriving. When I say this couldn't have been worse timing, I mean it. We got into the car. I should not have gotten into that car. I don't know why I did. I think I was just like trying to process and was just like, okay, let's go. And so it was a silent Uber ride. And in that car is when I started to like freak out. <laughs> I, I started having an anxiety attack because I started to have a bunch of theories, some crazier than others, but I just felt like I didn't know who was sitting next to me and I felt like I was used. And that's when the theory of, did she avoid telling me this because she wanted to keep living for free and now that she's leaving in a week, it's like whatever. Like I just, I felt so stupid and I felt so taken advantage of, and I felt embarrassed, and I felt, I felt really naive, if that makes sense. Like how could I not have 
picked up on this. And so while we were in the car, I came out to my parents over text. Yeah, I'm very close with my parents. I tell them I would say 99% of the things that go on in my life. The 1% was me being bisexual. They had no idea. My entire family had no idea. In that moment, I could have texted any of my friends, but there's certain times where it's like you just want to talk to your mom and dad, and that was one of those moments. So I sent my parents a really long text, just kind of being like, I hate that I have to do this over text. This is not how I wanted this to happen, but I'm bisexual, blah, 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 blah. This just happened. I'm freaking out. I don't know what to do. I'm not going to get super into that conversation, but that's how I came out to my parents. And then we pulled up to the dinner. I think I sat down at the dinner table for five minutes and then I was like, I need to get out of here. I, I need to just get out of here. Cassandra sat right next to me. It was just like, she kept talking to me like everything was fine. And I was like, what is happening right now? So I picked up my keys and I just walked out. It was the Merrill twins birthday. I was just like, happy birthday. I gotta go. And while Sandra was still at the dinner, I texted her and I said, hey, I think it's probably best if you stay somewhere else tonight. I think that's best. And she texted back and was like, I can be out tonight. As in like, I can grab my bags and be gone. Like go back to Chicago. And I was like, okay, if that's what you wanna do, like fine. So she came and grabbed her bags and left. And I literally never saw her again. That was the last time I saw her. And even when she did that, I was upstairs. So I didn't even, like we didn't have any communication or I didn't even see her. I just heard her come in, grab her stuff and leave. I waited two days to see if she would reach out to me with any kind of like explanation as far as like, hey, this is what I meant. Or like, I'm sorry if this upset you, but this is what I meant by it. Or I think you misunderstood or an apology or just anything. Like I said, Anything is better than nothing. So when I didn't hear from her for two days, I decided to send her a very lengthy text. And when I'm upset with someone, I'm not the type of person to be like, fuck you, you fucking bitch. Like, not my style. It gets nothing accomplished. So I spent a lot of time writing out this text explaining why what she had said hurt me so badly and how I felt about the situation. And I ended it with basically me saying like, you know better than anyone when somebody hurts me, like I'm, I'm done with them. So I told her that I was going to block her on everything and to please just go on with your life and I'll go on with mine. So after that, I was left to clean up the whole house and move out all on my own, which was really fun. And then about a week, maybe two weeks later, I'm not sure exactly the timeline. Sandra uploaded a video to her YouTube channel. If you haven't seen it, watch it if you want. I'm, I can give you the Cliff Notes version. It's basically her explaining how she found God and how LA and the people around her were very toxic. I found that video to be very insulting because I felt like I had done nothing but try to help her be the best version of herself and reach her dreams and achieve them. But that's besides the point. After that video went up is when I posted my text post coming out and explaining a little bit of the Sandra situation. Only after I posted that did she email me because she was blocked on everything else. She emailed me a message saying, I just want you to know I made I made that video for me and God only, which I don't know, didn't really make sense to me because why would you upload it for the world to see them? Anyway, she went on to be like, um, no matter what, I love you. And I don't know, I, do, I wish I could go back and like read it, but I deleted it because it was, I don't want to say it was insulting, but it kind of was. She said like, you can make a video about me. You can make everybody hate me. I don't care. There was no explanation basically is what I'm saying. There was no, there was no attempt at saving a friendship. I don't know. The whole thing is a mess. I know. I didn't reply to that email because I don't know. I just, I didn't see why I ever would. After that, we had a few more email exchanges where I emailed her and said, hey, I'm gonna need like X amount of money because on top of the entire year I paid, I put down a lot of money as a deposit, which I got like maybe half of it back because of all the damages in that house. So I emailed her and I was like, hey, all I'm asking for is like some money for the deposit, not even the entire deposit that was used to repair the house or the amount of money that was used over the whole year for rent. And I don't want this video to turn into like something all about money because at the end of the day, it's just money. 
I'll survive. I am lucky enough to be in a position where, yes, it was a lot of money that went down the drain out of my pocket that I shouldn't have been paying, but at least I had the money. Like, I'll survive, life will go on. It's more about the principle of it for me. We made an agreement. Don't, don't sign up for something that you can't follow through on. But yeah, I think that's pretty much where that story ends. Um, on top of all that, I wanted to answer specific questions that you guys had. So, do you regret being friends with Sandra? I don't. I don't regret being friends with Sandra. I regret being too giving, I think. I gave her a lot of opportunities to take advantage of my niceness, I think. Like when we when we went on trips and it was like, I asked her to come with me, so it was like, yeah, I'll get the food, I'll cover this, cover your flight, cover the hotel. Because I wanted to, because I knew that she didn't have a ton of money and if I'm inviting you on this trip, like, I'll take care of it, whatever. And unfortunately, I think that opened up a lot of opportunities to be taken advantage of. So I don't regret the friendship, I regret a lot of my actions during it. In your own opinion, trying to be unbiased, do you believe Sandra was still a good friend to you and still cared for you even with how she felt about your sexuality, or do you believe it was all a facade and you were and you were someone she could just use along the way to benefit herself as she needed? I have it recorded because I recorded this video the other day. <laughs> I'm 50-50, like I think that the friendship had a lot of genuine moments and we got along great. I think that she was still a good friend. I don't know if the motivation behind being a good friend was genuine. I don't know if she was being a good friend to be a good friend or if she was doing it to hopefully get something from me. I'll never know. I'll never know. And that's okay. We're moving past it. Do you think calling out Sandra by name was wrong considering your huge fan base? Do you have any regrets regarding that? I go back and forth. Part of me thinks maybe I should never have said anything at all. And then a bigger part of me that is still a little hurt and confused thinks, well, it's not fair that she gets to just walk away from this mess she left here and go back to Chicago and start a new life and pretend like this never happened. I mean, I already did it, so there's no going back in time. It is what it is, but yeah. All I can do is ask you guys not to send her hate. I mean, this that's not the intention of this video. Have you talked to Sandra since? If so, how did it go? Besides those emails I told you guys about, not a word. Not a word. It's just so crazy to me. I mean, I did tell her like, once I'm done, I'm done. Yeah, I don't know, those two days before I sent that text, it was really like heartbreaking because it was, it felt like she had no issue just throwing the friendship away. Like it meant that little to her that she was like, well, oh well, whatever, back to Chicago I go. Like there was not even a little bit of effort made to, to try to save our friendship. I don't know. In regards to losing Sandra as a friend, were you ever hesitant at first to just drop her because of all your history and how close you two were? Or were you just completely and utterly done with her for good and you didn't even think twice about ending the friendship? Like I said, those two days before I sent that long text message, in my, in my head I wasn't like, we're not friends anymore, but I also wasn't like, we'll get through this. I didn't know what to think because I... I didn't expect this to ever happen. It wasn't until I posted something publicly that she decided to reach out. I don't know what the intentions were there. What is your view on Christianity since the Sandra situation? I've had numerous people who are Christians reach out and say like, I hope that that didn't taint it for you or give us a bad rep in your eyes. And it didn't at all. In fact, many people that reached out told me like, we don't believe that, who are we to judge? Who helped you most through the Sandra situation? During the time I had a, a good group of friends around me, um, but to be honest with you, I didn't really like talking about it that much. I didn't want to because I felt embarrassed. I felt stupid and I just, I didn't really want to talk about it. But I did have a really good group of people that were around me and were there to listen if I ever did want to talk about it. What was the most important thing you learned through this whole experience with Sandra and coming to terms with your sexuality? The biggest thing I learned is that I'm not alone. I'm not the only person that has gone through something like this and I, I won't be the last to ever go through something like this. But it's also very comforting to know that I'm not insane and I'm not over exaggerating and that my feelings are valid and it's really nice to hear other people kind of give me that validation that like yes you have a right to be upset yes you have a right to be hurt because there's always those couple comments that are like how dare you do this to someone who was your best friend blah 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 and then I start to think well was what I did bad but it's like no that's crazy that's crazy there should be no part of me that feels guilty for cutting someone out of my life who treated me poorly. So it's it's nice to have people that understand. What does the red tattoo mean? <laughs> I've been asked this at least a million times now. Me and Sandra got matching tattoos way back in the day. So this is the tattoo, it's 55613. Literally the meaning is so simple, I can't believe nobody guessed it. 556 is my favorite number, 13 is her favorite number, and that's 
literally the simple meaning. That's it. But moving on to the questions about my sexuality. No more about Sandra. We're done. Were you planning on coming out soon or did the whole thing force it out of you? I don't want to say I was forced because I wasn't. At the end of the day, it was my choice to post that and come out. The situations surrounding it were not ideal and it wasn't a fun coming out experience, but it was my choice and I chose to do it. Was it hard to admit to yourself that you were bisexual? Were you afraid that others would perceive you differently. It was hard for me to admit it to myself because I grew up very religious and I was taught growing up that being gay is wrong. And also I didn't know what bisexual was, like I said before. So I, I just always felt like there was something wrong with me and that like I was flawed. And I never understood. I never understood. And it wasn't until I moved to LA that I finally started to understand myself a little bit better. There was just so many people here that were so open about their sexuality and so proud of who they were. It just like, oh boy, here we go. It like made me feel normal, you know? Like I, I, yeah, I just felt normal and I felt welcomed and I felt accepted. Yeah, I think that's when I was like, okay, this is who I am and there's nothing wrong with that. Is your attraction to men and women different? Do you prefer one or the other? I get asked this all the time. Like, what do I prefer more? Uh, it's 50-50, genuinely. But I will say that because I grew up always like being in relationships with men, flirting with men, I'm a lot more better, more better, and more better at like flirting with guys. It's like, I know what I'm doing in that sense. But with girls, I get so nervous. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I've, I've talked to a few girls, been with a few girls, but it's still like, hi, you're pretty. And then I run away. Have you ever had feelings for Sandra? This is another question I got all the time. Everybody had theories that like we were actually dating, we broke up and it was this big thing. My sister was like, tell me the truth, were you dating? No, cross my heart, hope to die. Never had feelings for Sandra. We're never, nothing, no. I feel like there was probably a million more questions I could answer or a million other things that I forgot to say, but I'm gonna wrap things up. Hopefully I answered your questions. Hopefully we can just move on from this now. Um, again, I just wanna reiterate that I don't want anyone to send Sandra hate. That is not what this is about. If you are someone struggling with your sexuality and you need someone to talk to, or if you're in a situation similar to what mine was, I'm going to put a bunch of links and hotlines of people that you can reach out to and talk to. And I just want to end it by saying love is love. Who you are is not reduced to who you choose to love. You are so much more than that. You are so much more than your sexuality. I accept you and I love you in case you haven't heard it today. So thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope I answered your questions and I will see you guys next time. Bye.